When you tap the Where To button on the map form, you see something that might look like a new form, but it isn't really. What you see initially is this, and it seems like a new form, but notice that the focus is on the Where To text field. If we switch focus to the Where From text field on top, you will see something else. You will see the map and the ability to type in a new location. So what we really have here are two separate overlays on top of the map, one above and one below. There is another subtle behavior that I only noticed when I started playing with this UI. Notice the line and the shapes next to the text field. When you move the focus between the fields, the shapes flip to highlight the focused field. We could build something like this with a dialog or interaction dialog, but I chose to go with simpler container instances on top of the map. To do this, I first had to add a listener to the where to button. Then I add the show navigation button method. Let's dive into this method. We create a new layer on top of the current layers in the form. Layers are associated with a component class, which allows us to keep it unique and prevents different code from messing with our layer. Also notice that we replicate the look of the title area without actually creating a title area. The square image already exists from before. We created it for the where to button. We add a new circle image that we can place next to the from to fields. We place the text fields in a border layout next to the labels representing the circle and square. We place that in a box layout Y container and that's effectively the entire UI of the top portion. The background painter allows us to control the shadow from the top area and draw the line between the circle slash square images. The fact that we have a background painter makes some of the aspects of the UI ID less significant. For instance, background color. But we still need it for padding, margin, etc. The shadow image is created asynchronously by the call serially on idle code in the constructor. So it might, might not be ready when this is drawn. We fill the rectangle on top of the drop shadow, covering half of it. This makes it feel like a directional shadow. I used fill rect instead of draw line to make a two pixel wide line I could have used draw line with stroke, but this is simpler and probably faster. The entire layer uses border layout. North makes sense for this as we want it to span the width but remain at preferred height in the north. We'll use the center for the rest of the UI soon. The component animates down from the top with animate layout. We pre-position the component location above the from, so animate layout will slide everything from the right point. This UI requires three new styles. First is the where toolbar, which is an opaque white container. We have five millimeter padding on the bottom for the shadow of the container. And as usual, the zero margin. The from to text field is opaque with a grayish color background and black foreground. It has two millimeters of padding and two millimeters of margin to keep it spaced. It uses a standard light font. The component also has a selected version which has slightly darker grayish color. It derives from the unselected version of the UI ID. We also have a custom UI ID 
which for the most part just uses a darker gray color for the hint text. The margin is zero again. Most everything else is derived from the from to text field, 